All right, I'm uh, Sean Mackles, editorial director of Skybound, and uh, I'll run it down the line. Soon, uh, close to me is Justin Jordan, the writer of Dead Body Road. <laughs> Next to him is Andy Biggle, the writer of Beep of Beeps. <laughs> the handsome man to his right is Paul Azaceda, the artist of Outcast. <laughs> the other handsome man to my right is David Schulner, the writer and creative clone. Then we have Robert Kirkman, and uh, next to him is uh, <laughs> Josh Williamson, the writer and creator of Ghosted. Yeah. All right, uh, first we're going to start talking about uh, Walking Dead. Yeah. Talking about that? Yeah, are we done? Yeah. We're doing that? Uh -huh. <laughs> Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you all for uh, continuing to read Walking Dead. That's always a cool thing. I like being able to continue writing it, so that's awesome. Uh, I don't know if you've heard the news, but Walking Dead 115 just uh, sold out of, uh, I think, 353,000 copies. So it's looking like it's the like top book of the year uh, so far. So. Thank you so much for that. That's uh, that's great. I think we'll we'll keep doing that book. Uh, I don't know if you've read uh, 115, but uh, uh, it's the beginning of the All Out War storyline, uh, and uh, that's going to be pretty cool. We're going to have all kinds of uh, explosive, crazy, uh, awesome stuff happening. It's the first time that the book has ever had a uh, legitimate war going on inside of it, and. Uh, uh, it's going to be a big story. It's going to run for 12 parts, and uh, it's going to ship on an accelerated schedule. So we're going to have um, like almost two two issues out every month, but it'll basically be like uh, 12 issues over the course of seven months. So uh, uh, really, really cool there. In order to be able to do that, uh, Charlie Adlard is going to be handling the pencils for the duration of this arc, and a new guy named uh, Stefano Gaudiano is coming into the fold. It's a fantastic inker that's done a lot of work with uh, Michael Lark and uh, uh, Jackson Geis and. Uh, a lot of those guys, so uh, really good guy. And then we've got Dave Stewart, who's taking over the color of our covers. So uh, it's, a, it's a new era of The Walking Dead. There's all kinds of new stuff going on. So uh, there's a new logo. There's a new logo. There's a new logo. Yeah, we're kind of changing the logo up. Yeah, it's awesome. I'm trying to write better, so <laughs> we're trying that out. See how that works. So here's a cover to 116. That'll be out very soon. And then one, I don't know. So is that, that's that's one seventeen. Like one twenty. Just throw it out of order. That's not 120. I know that's 119. 120's got Negan on it. 119. All right. It's okay if I don't know this, but if you don't know this, we're in trouble. So, so. No, it's definitely 119, because I know what's happening there. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oops. <laughs> yeah, I love these covers. This is 120. So a lot, a lot of cool stuff coming up. A lot of people facing off, and gritting teeth. And they're like, like facing each other, and then they're not facing each other. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that guy's back. Is that guy back? Yeah, he's back. Oh, uh, that's not good. I uh, wish that guy had something to do. So uh, anyway, this is uh, uh, this is our Spanish edition. We're doing uh, Dead in Spanish. So very excited about that. Uh, our second volume here comes out in December. Summer's correct. Yeah, first volume came out last month. Yeah, and then uh, we're going to be releasing a new volume uh, in Spanish every three months. So hopefully we'll, you know, eventually catch up with the English volumes and have like a good library of books there available. So uh, that should be cool. This this volume is titled uh, I can't read that. <laughs> Kilo Metros uh, Atros. 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 See. I don't know, man. <laughs> He doesn't write these books. What? <laughs> okay, so earlier this week, uh, we actually announced a new horror series uh, by Robert and Paul. And, uh, yes, Outcast. I'm okay. excited about this. It'll be coming out. Uh, uh, be coming out uh, fairly early in uh, in 2014, uh, and. Uh, uh, Paul and I are hard at work on this book. It's a uh, uh, an exorcism story. That's going to be another uh, regular monthly series. And uh, like The Walking Dead, takes familiar tropes from zombie movies and 
puts a cool spin on them, and uh, we kind of explore that world and kind of uh, you know tear it apart and reconstruct it and all that kind of fun stuff. Uh, this is going to do the same with like exorcism films. So uh, there's going to be a lot of new elements worked into it. It's going to be a, a cool, uh, cool character study, and uh, we're going to be uh, explaining more and more about this book uh, in the coming months. So uh, be on the lookout for that. Paul, you uh, would you like to add anything at all? Can I put you on the spot? Uh, uh, I don't even know. It's going to be scary. Awesome. I'm trying to do that. Thanks, Paul. That's going to be good. It's going to be a lot of, no, I'm really excited about it, actually. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. It's the first time I've done I'm going. Thanks. So it's going to be the longest thing I did, hopefully, unless you hate me and fire me. We're going to go like 200, 300 issues. Awesome. So, yeah. Paul. Charlie, I can do it. Um, no, yeah, I'm really excited. So, I'm oh, so you have to work faster because we have to catch up with The Walking Dead. I'm going to try and get both books at issue 300 at the same time. I don't know if I told you that. He's up to what, 115, you said, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> He's got a bit of a head start. That's right. All right. I'm going to break his hands, so that might slow down. Well, 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 I don't know. Who wants Charlie's hands broken? Anyone? No, see? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> They're turning against you already. <laughs> Welcome to your first Skybound panel. Awesome. Thank you. Cool. Uh, the next project we're going to talk about is uh, Dead Body Road, which is, uh, like I said, written by Justin Jordan and art by Matteo Scalera. It's a six-issue miniseries coming out this December, and uh, Justin, you can tell me a little bit about it. Well, the gentleman you see there on the cover is a guy named Gage. Gage's wife died during a uh, heist, and Gage has decided that everybody that was involved needs to die horribly, uh, so he's going about making that happen. Um, I'm a big... Uh, <coughs> Most of the fiction, I probably the majority of the fiction that I read and uh, is crime stuff. I'm a really big fan of Albert Leonard, James Lee Burke, um, even going back to like Dashiell Hammett. And so I, I wanted the opportunity to write a crime book with Scott Bound gave me. So it's kind of our, it's kind of a modern western in feel. You can see there's kind of a desert setting to it, and it's uh, basically a revenge tale. It gets kind of complicated because everybody's various goals start crashing into each other in unexpected ways. So what turns out is a simple revenge mission rapidly gets fairly complicated. Also, Mateus Calera is amazing. Yeah, here we have a uh, cover issue too. Yeah, I, I can't speak enough about Mateo. I mean, he's he's really one of the, the quickly rising superstars. He's got another book coming out from Image in November called Black Science of River Mender. He's doing two books of incredible quality at the same time. So, yes, actually, beautiful. Mateo does one book with one hand while simultaneously doing the other book with the other hand. So we've got the left hand book. Yeah, he's working on his feet too. <laughs> hey, they can't all be winners. Let's just move along. <laughs> Speaking of winners, we have Invincible. Uh, talk again. <laughs> yeah, this is the cover to uh, 108. It's part of the uh, maybe it's maybe it's the, I don't know if the cover indicates this a little bit, but uh, it's the uh, kind of the wrap up of the Angstrom Levy story. Uh, so uh, uh, we're going to be uh, you know wrapping that up, and then that's going to kind of open things up uh, quite a bit to uh, a really cool new storyline that's going to start in 109 that involves a lot of things that I'm not going to go into, but uh, there's a lot of big things coming in Invincible, uh, things are going to be uh, changing quite a bit, the book is going to get uh, a little darker, a little more violent, uh, if you can believe it, and uh, there's going to be some pretty high stakes and uh, some really cool, uh, really cool changes coming. So if you've been with the book for, you know, 106 or whatever issues that have been out so far, uh, there's a lot of cool stuff coming So uh, that I think uh, nobody's going to expect. So uh, be on the lookout for some crazy stuff. Except you just told them to expect it, so... Well, they still won't be expecting it. <laughs> that's, that's how crazy it is. Don't worry. Cool. Um, I can tell you what it is right now, and oh, I, I still know. be like, what? <laughs> that really happened? Um, also, you know, if you're familiar with Invincible, we have Invincible Universe. Uh, the first trade comes out in November. This is the cover to it. And, uh, you know, it's, it's sort of all the, the stories that the regular Invincible is too big for the regular Invincible title, including uh, we have an upcoming wedding. Big wedding? And uh, some familiar uh, foes return to recap. Return of the Lizard League, if anyone's a fan of Invincible. It's cool stuff. Yeah, but uh, Phil Hester and Todd Knocker are doing dynamic work, and it's uh, just a shitload of fun. Are they, like, messing up the United States? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Bunch cool. of jerks. <laughs> uh, next up is uh, one of our newest Skybound titles, Ghosted. 
Uh, this is a cover of issue five, and actually uh, the first three issues have completely sold out at the retail level. We've gone back to the second printings, and uh, it's, yeah, no, absolutely. So yeah, Josh, I go ahead. Yeah, that's the cover issue five. Was that issue four just came out this last Wednesday. Um, that's the trade paperback cover coming out in December. Um, yeah, issue five is gonna be crazy. If you've been following the book, uh, it's about a guy who's broken out of prison to steal a ghost from a haunted house. Essentially, it's Ocean's Eleven. Yeah, it's in, inside a haunted house instead of inside a casino. Um, and yeah, a lot of stuff crazy has been going on. A lot of supernatural, a lot of crime stuff going. Uh, yeah, and issue five, is, it's really a game changer because issue six is the beginning of a new arc. Uh, and I hope you guys are reading the book and if you get to issue five, it's, it is a lot of bad stuff happens. If you've been following the book, you know that's kind of the theme of the book. It's, it's kind of filled with bad characters, especially uh, Jackson Winters, our main guy. Can be a bit of a jerk sometimes. I think by the time you get to issue six, you guys are going to end up loving him. But yeah, please read issue five. When you get there, it's, it's going to be crazy. Some of you might be a little mad. Um, but just keep reading, you'll see we have a big plan. Yeah, and uh, this, this trade comes out in December, and it's yeah. going to be at a low introductory price of nine ninety nine. so it's perfect to catch up and get ready for number six. <laughs> um, number six? Oh, yeah. Can, and from now on, uh, on the covers, we're going to have Mateo Scalera doing the covers. And then issue six... <laughs> Uh, yeah, we actually are uh, are bringing on a, a new artist for that arc. Um, his name is. Uh, Wait, I'm, I'm gonna say it right. I know. Yeah. I'm gonna say it right. It's Divide John Felice. John Felice. John Felice. John Felice. I was yeah. close. Uh, he was the artist on Northlanders, yeah. and yeah. he did uh, General Rebirth. He's great. He was my first choice uh, to sort of fill in for Goran. Uh, and we were able to get him. At first we weren't sure, and, and I remember Sean and I like were going back and forth with one day saying he was, and the next day he wasn't. <laughs> uh, and then we were able to make it work out, and I'm really excited. Uh, but what we're doing with the next arc is it's sort of dealing with the survivors of the haunted house, and so even though they, the ones who do escape the haunted house, they're still haunted by what happens there. Oh man, you're giving us stuff away here. <laughs> <laughs> These pages just came in the other day, but I, I, I could not resist it. I could this not is resist one of my it. favorite uh, scenes of the book. It's sort of uh, what happens is that one of the things with Jackson is Jackson really wants to just be left alone. Um, that's been kind of one of the running themes. <laughs> so much so, he will blow your fucking brain. Yeah, he gets out. found out, you know? <laughs> Somebody else finds him and he gets pissed and just kills the guy. Like, <laughs> it's awesome. Picks him off a, picks off a pier. But, uh, for Look the how upset <laughs> Robert was about this. He's so angry. Uh, but yeah, man. Yeah. This is the second time you've seen these pages, so, you know. No, that's good. Yeah, I'm, really, I'm really excited about it. I'm glad people are digging it. You know, it's, we're having a lot of fun uh, working on this book. For me, it's uh, a dream come true doing this book. It's something I've been wanting to do for a long time. And I've been telling people this nonstop that it's probably the most me uh, thing that I've ever written. Um, and it's one of those things, you know, we're working with other publishers that you're getting a little bit of um, editorial influence, I think is the best way to put it. Uh, but with Ghosted, it was one of the first books where I wasn't fucked with, you know, it was one of the first books that really I was left alone. And people really like it. So it kind of like proved, a challenge. The, it proved the point, <laughs> you know, so like, leave me alone and we'll make a good book. Yeah, and no, I'm really, absolutely. really, really happy with how this one's turning out. Yeah. And for fans of Goron, he'll be back. Don't worry about that. Oh yeah, we have a plan. If you guys are, it's crazy. There's a <laughs> if that was like the one reason you're picking up the book and you're gonna quit, don't please don't. No, no, no Goran, Goran's coming back. We have a, we have a plan um, for one of the couple couple different characters. Uh, are anybody reading the book? Does anybody like Ghosted? Who's your uh, yeah? Who's your favorite character? Jackson. Really? All right, awesome. Yeah. Okay, cool. Are there any Anderson fans in the room? Anybody likes Anderson? <laughs> awesome. Yeah. All right. Keep reading. You're gonna. You might be mad later, but keep reading. Uh, one, one more project we have launching from Skybound this year is called uh, Manifest Destiny. It's by uh, Chris Dingus, who's a, a television writer, and Matthew Roberts, who's an amazing artist who got his start on Battle Pope uh, almost a decade ago. And uh, basically, it follows the uh, you know the adventures of Lewis and Clark uh, on their expedition westward. Uh, to exterminate all the monsters on the frontier to help the United States expand. Uh, yeah, but you know, it's, it's the stuff they don't teach you in, in class. <laughs> so, uh, you know, we have, oh, hold on. That's, a, that's a peek at the first issue with a, a, monster, a frontier monster. About to split that guy's skull over. And uh, some upcoming covers. All right, next up, uh, we have Thief of Thieves, which is uh, currently in the middle of his third arc. 
And last year when I met when I met Andy, we were announcing him as uh, the writer of the third arc, and I'm here today to announce him as the new ongoing series writer. Um, his scripts have been incredible, and we just have full confidence that he can, he can take this series and rub it in and make it the, the best thing possible. So, Andy, you want to talk sort of uh, about your experiences and? Yeah, no, it's, uh, you have to forgive me, my voice is going. I've been talking in noisy bars for the past three days straight. Um, yeah, no, uh, Thief of Thieves is genuinely uh, the, the best job I've ever had in comics. I've never had this much fun writing a book, um, and I think it shows, hopefully. Uh, yeah, so well, I originally was only going to be doing six issues. Uh, the current arc we're doing is this big heist that the whole series has been leading up to for the past year. Uh, which kind of requires a cast of about 25 characters and all different kind of locations and a lot of jumping around between between the parallel action, uh, which has been a quite a juggling act to, to try and pull off. Uh, and I think that uh, I think once we've once I've wrapped up this up, well, I have wrapped up this up now. That for the next thing, I'm, I think I'm going to try and get into a. We've been talking about doing a slightly sort of leaner and meaner kind of story mode. Uh, so less characters, a bit darker, a bit grittier, um, and bloodier, frankly. Um, but yeah, I'm, like, I'm, I'm really thrilled to be doing it and uh, uh, a lot of fun. Cool. Very cool. Yeah, I mean, uh, just to be completely honest, the whole uh, idea of doing a, a writer's room approach on Thief of Thieves was mainly because I didn't want to have to uh, do all the hard research that goes into writing good heists. And uh, when Andy came on, he was like, yeah, I got this. I, I know heists very well and was doing such amazing work. I was like, you know what? I think, uh, I think we should just let this guy take over. So uh, it's great to have him on board. And I think there's going to be uh, uh, a lot cooler stuff coming on and, and, and a lot more consistency in the book. And uh, I'm really excited about the new direction. Cool. Uh, the next time we're going to talk about this clone. Um, David can do a much better job than I can. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's true. Uh, <laughs> Hi, I'm David, and uh, this is Clone. Uh, issue 10 is out right now. Uh, issue 11 comes out next, next week. Next week. Yeah. Um, issue 11 starts a brand new arc. So if you haven't caught up yet, uh, you can start on issue 11. Uh, the basic gist of Clone is what if you woke up one morning, made yourself a cup of coffee, opened the door, and you saw a version of yourself bleeding out from a gunshot wound, telling you, they're coming for you, they're coming for all of us. And our hero, Luke Taylor, realizes when he was a child, he was cloned by his father to save his life. Uh, he, ne he was never supposed to live this long. His father thought he was gonna, his, his small child was gonna die. He worked for DARPA at the time, and found a way to clone his child to save him. The government quickly appropriated that research and made a hundred versions of Luke Taylor. And now, because of Facebook, uh, the clones started finding each other. <laughs> as, as will happen on Facebook. Um, and so the government has no choice but to shut the program down, eliminating every single clone in existence. Uh, but Luke Taylor, uh, our lead, is going to save those clones. And uh, issue 11 starts a brand new arc, uh, new villains, new situations, um, we have great new uh, antagonist for Luke. Her name is Mrs. K. <laughs> she is. You can tell she's pretty bad. Uh, but in addition to, uh, there's a reason she's wearing negligee. Uh, it's not just uh, gratuitous negligee. Oh, that's, that's a big reveal right, right there, actually. Uh, there are other clones. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay. And uh, there's dinosaurs now. Uh, <laughs> The clones killed the dinosaurs. You did not expect to see that one coming. <laughs> That's how it is. <laughs> Wait, they did what? <laughs> uh, and in, uh, at uh, San Diego Comic Con, we announced that Universal had optioned Clone to make into a TV show. And then a couple weeks later, we sold Clone to NBC. So I'm writing the pilot, and Robert's executive producing it. <laughs> now, all I need to say is. And, and would NBC say no to Robert twice? <laughs> I don't know. So we'll see. Uh, we'll find out in January if we're going to pilot. But um, clone's still going, and uh, it's a. You know they may see this. <laughs> well, not, NBC's going to stand for nothing but clone. <laughs> That's our goal. Uh, but it's a. It's this has been a joy for me. Um, uh, there's, I've just had the best experience writing clone with these guys, and uh, I think you'll really enjoy it. Wow. So 
This is the cover to Super Dinosaur 23, which uh, should be out uh, very shortly. And uh, uh, we had a lot of cool stuff going on in this. Uh, and, um, uh, you know, the dino men are, uh, you know, tearing stuff up and causing a bunch of trouble. And there's uh, a lot of big battles going on. And uh, I think Super Dinosaur is going to get injured in this issue, possibly. possibly. Uh, and uh, don't read anything into the injury uh, too much. But uh, we're going to be going on a brief hiatus after issue 23 with Super Dinosaur. Uh, and we'll be coming back uh, probably later in 2014. Uh, but uh, Jason Howard and I are going to be uh, pursuing other projects like uh, Outcast and then Jason's got uh, another cool thing that'll be announced uh, very soon, but uh, we're going to be uh, taking a taking a break on Super Dinosaur for a little bit, and then we'll get back to it later. Uh, now it's time for questions and answers. Sweet. There's no microphone. Yeah, there's no so microphone, but if you guys want to line yell. up, uh, maybe Politely. over on the side over here, probably best, and we can kind of step up and use your outside voice. <laughs> Yeah, I mean it's still very much in the works. It's just these kind of things take uh, take some time. Uh, but uh, but yeah, I mean it's it's very much in the works, and uh, we're hoping to have some announcements on that very soon. What's up? Oh. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> no, uh, yeah, uh, Charlie Adlard and I have been doing a thing on the side called Passenger. That is a uh, original graphic novel that I think we did. We announce that here last year. Help me out. All right. Well, don't be mean. But uh, uh, but yeah, uh, uh, it's it's almost done. To be honest, we just haven't solicited it yet because uh, we keep putting out more than twelve issues of Walking Dead in a year, and so uh, and Charlie is pissed. Let me just be honest, uh, he is very mad at me for not uh, finishing that so that we can put it out. But uh, it, will be, uh, it will be coming out uh, uh, soon. I'm going to say it, it'll be out before the end of 2014. I'm just going to say that. That's the plan. I don't mean it, but I'll say it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, I mean, unfortunately, like, uh, you know, Walking Dead has just become a bit of a priority, and so we've been kind of focusing on that. It's going to be awesome when it comes out. Well, I hope you're still excited, but I do understand that the excitement can, like, wind down after waiting for so long. So if you don't end up wanting to buy it, that's totally fine. I'll be upset, but, uh, I mean, it happens. It's my own fault, really. So, uh, you know, I, I do apologize. So, sorry. Thank you. Look what you did to Robert. I, I, I love you. We could. We could. AMC would be lucky to have that show. Um, but uh, but yeah, hopefully hopefully we don't get to that point. I think well, I think we're doing okay at NBC. I think they I think they like us so far. David is a, a very popular fellow over there. They hate me. They've heard of The Walking Dead, so. <laughs> well, be careful. Probably not. <laughs> Speak in code. Let's do that. Spoilers. Name the issue number and then refer to it as the thing. <laughs> Out of all the characters who have ever died... We're not going to make it. Who do you think you would... Who's the death you think was like the hardest to write? You think uh, probably Andrea's. I think was probably the hardest to write, uh, oh, but uh, it was the best joke. The best joke. Uh, she has not died in the book yet. I'm kidding. Uh, but uh, I'm joking. Uh, no, I mean, uh, uh, yeah. Um, the one I will not mention that uh, uh, that died in issue 100 was probably the hardest to write, just because. It was the, uh, no, I liked it. I mean, it was a good death, and it was really cool with the bat and the, and the smashing. But, uh, uh, but the thing that was weird for me was it was the first time, this will be hints, so uh, I'm not going to spoil it, but uh, it was the first time I had ever killed a character in the comic that currently existed on the show and was represented by an actor. So that only narrows it down a little bit. But, uh, uh, and, and it was it was awkward. Like the next time I saw this person, I was like, "Is that the person?" I, I really, 
And it was like a particularly gruesome death too. And so if I had had an argument with that person before, I, I, I would have like been worried that they would have thought that it was because of that argument or something. But I don't usually argue with the actors, so it was okay. But uh, usually, but uh, yeah, I mean that was a that was a rough one. Just like doing that and then like seeing the person in in, in real life and having to you know apologize. So, but Andrew Lincoln was like, it's okay, dude. Don't worry. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Careful. Oh, that's a big hint. The Baconator. <laughs> but you still did, right? Yeah. Because <laughs> Baconators are delicious. Swing by Wendy's next time you're hungry. There's like 400 strips of bacon on those things. It's, uh, it's pretty crazy. But, Is it too much? Uh, no, I was just going to say the opposite. Will you be giving us another sort of specific character based on the story that you have in mind? Uh, well, the uh, the you know things like the Michonne special, the Governor special, the Tyrese special. Those are uh, those are designed specifically for when we introduce a new character into the TV show, and it's somebody that uh, that is from the comics that's new, so that like when television fans go into a comic shop, they can be like, oh, that Michonne character was just introduced into the show, and maybe I'll try this, and it'll like get them hooked on the comics and kind of see how like at the end of those issues, it's like read The Walking Dead, and there's like ad ads for the trades and stuff like that. Uh, it's kind of a way to like get TV viewers hooked and so anytime there are big characters that are introduced on the show then we'll do one shots like that to like spotlight those characters and so uh, uh, there will possibly be another one of those one shots very soon and uh, you may find out which character it is uh, in a few hours at the Walking Dead panel so I think there might be a big announcement coming we'll see it's gonna be Spencer <laughs> it's not gonna be Spencer <laughs> Yes, I can announce today exclusively that Invincible there's nothing going on. Uh, and, and so, <laughs> we're doing our best, but uh, you know, The Walking Dead, you know, you have to wait for the right thing and you know, clone, you know, you have to wait until like the right team comes and the right network is interested and you know, you want to make sure that it's good above all else because you really only get one shot at this and so Invincible is a tough nut to crack. You know, it's it's very expensive as a TV show, and it's very easy to do as a bad movie. So we're trying to make sure that we get this one right, and it's something that's very near and dear to my heart. So, you know, Thief of Thieves, I'll farm that out all day long. But Invincible, <laughs> very kidding. But uh, uh, yeah, we'll we'll get to it eventually. All right, maybe we'll get to it eventually. I'm sometimes too optimistic. Um, I really love the collaboration with uh, Telltale Games, making a Walking Dead game, and I was wondering if they're uh, I mean, I'll tell. I'll say that uh, there's been a lot of discussions with Telltale about uh, uh, expanding our relationship. Uh, right now, they're hard at work on uh, Walking Dead's uh, season two game, which hopefully they'll be announcing the release of that very soon. Uh, but uh, we are talking about other things. There's just nothing, uh, nothing concrete that we can talk about just yet. Is Invincible ever going to cross over to any other uh, company again? I really like that when you made, up, made fun of all the Marvel characters. Yeah, I don't think they're going to let me do that again. Uh, uh, maybe someday. I, uh, yeah, I mean, I've talked back and forth to a few people here and there, but it just hasn't really materialized. There have been a few few things like that, but uh, I'm not going to mention them now because they, they didn't work out. They may still happen someday, but uh, there's no plans right now, but maybe eventually. Oh, that's, that is all Photoshop. I don't know if you can tell, but uh, 
John Lehman, who does a fantastic image book called uh, Chew, uh, illegally uses my likeness uh, in the background of some uh, uh, of some issues, and so uh, uh, it's, it's my head pasted on like uh, like beefcake calendar photos of like oil, oiled up buff men. Uh, my wife loves the comic, but uh, uh, yeah, that's not not me, unfortunately. John Lehman is so beneath me, I don't think revenge is going to my time. But, uh, no, no, I'm sincere. Uh, but, uh, yeah, let, let him know. Uh, let's get a hashtag, uh, John Lehman sucks going or something. Um, there's been rumors of the Walking Dead spin-off. Do you have anything to say about that? Rumors? Uh, we announced that. Uh, we, uh, uh, publicly. Um, uh, spin-off show. Uh, we're not going to be doing a spin-off comic. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, um, we're, you know, uh, AMC is, uh, you know, very interested in developing a spin-off, and uh, I'm actually working on that uh, as we speak, technically. I should be. I'm supposed to be. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, it's something that, uh, you know, we're, we're going to make sure that it's, it's very good. Uh, it's, it's a very risky endeavor, I feel, because it's very easy to do something that is not as good as the original. Uh, but uh, we're really going to work hard and make sure that that's not the case. Everyone involved in this is invested in making a Walking Dead show that can stand shoulder to shoulder with the original show and uh, be just as unique and just as exciting and just as cool. So uh, I think we're going to pull it off. So we should have some more concrete announcements about, like, uh, you know, release dates and stuff uh, at some point in the future. But right now it's just a project that's in development. Cool. Uh, Two-part question. Uh-oh. Are you going to get Negan into the, into the Walking Dead show? And how the fuck are you going to get him past the censors without messing up his character? <laughs> I, I tweeted about how I was angry that my, uh, my phone always changes fuck to duck. I don't, I don't know why that is. I, it'll be like ducking and duck this and you ducker and I'm like, what? Uh, and so I thought that would be a funny thing to do in the show. If we do bring Negan in, he's just saying ducking all the time. It doesn't make any sense. Uh, we probably won't do that. Um, yeah, we can't use the F word on AMC, so uh, we'll probably never put Negan in the show, sorry. Oh. I'm kidding. Uh, uh, you know, we'll, when we get to that stuff, uh, you know, I would very much like to see Negan in the show, and he'll probably just say screw all the time or something. We'll figure it out. Awesome. It'll be great. Maybe we'll bleep it like they do Breaking Bad sometimes, but that may be a little weird. We'll, we'll figure it out. Yeah. I don't know what's up with that. I don't know, man. We should write a letter together. <laughs> Great. As far as your main characters, who are your, if you ever adapt them to TV or movies, who are your main actor? For Ghosted, uh, David Duchovny to play uh, Jackson. I would think of a you know supernatural Californication, so they're, they're total bastards, and I think it would work. Yeah. Uh, for Invincible, I would pick Ed O'Neill. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, for clone, I would uh, I would pick like Sam Rockwell. Um, That's good. You need a good I need a good leading man who can also play a hundred other characters. So Sam Rockwell. Well, mine it's not out yet or anything. But who is the actor then? Maybe like, you, you, you uh, we're not gonna say that. You never know. You never know if that. Uh, I, I try to Ed O'Neill. Ed O'Neill. <laughs> <laughs> it's my go-to answer because I, I love that guy from Married with Children and Modern Family. And I hear he like uh, has breakfast at this like breakfast place in LA like every day, and I always think about going there and like stalking him. But then I then I come to my senses. I don't want Ed O'Neill to have me arrested. That would ruin things. Uh, I guess for Thief of Thieves, John Hamm would make a good great one. Yeah. So now that Mad Men's finished, I think I might be free him. Well, not a wife's taste. choice. <laughs> yeah, John Hamm is every wife's choice. <laughs> well, with uh, Dead Body Road, I would probably have also went with John Hamm. But, uh, <laughs> that bastard. Um, <clears throat> he is, I don't know, he kind of looks like David Boreanaz, so maybe if he can, you know, tamp that down and get him away from bones. I don't know. <laughs> tamp that down? <laughs> Look, man, I'm tired. <laughs>
Cool. Uh, Ready? Yell from the back. Hi, guys. Um, I'm just I mean, it depends on your involvement in the project. I know that, you know, on Walking Dead, I'm in all the casting sessions, and I'm, you know, I'm shooting down actors. If you're an aspiring actor and you didn't get on the Walking Dead, it's partly my fault. Um, but, uh, so, so there you go. Uh, but if you come up to me after the show, I'll say, or after the con, I'll be like, hey, uh, I, I have nothing to do with that. I'm sorry. I, I don't know why you didn't make it. Uh, but, uh, uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, we're, we're you know, we're, we're all very involved. I think the cool thing about Hollywood now is that, uh, you know, there was an air of like, don't involve those people when we adapt their things because we know better than them. And I think that was the mode of operation for many, many years. And that's changed. I think that people have seen that projects that have the original creator uh, more involved actually do better and maintain more of the spirit that made the thing popular in the first place. And so it's really cool that, you know, I think people do get involved in, in that level of decisions now at this point. All right. Cool. Yeah, over there. Um, I have a question about Wasted. So in the uh, book, there's like a lot of um, references to like television shows that do ghost hunting and stuff. Mm -hmm. So do you watch a lot of that? And also, do you believe in ghosts in general? Oh, man, yeah. Yeah. But uh, I always tell people this. Um, that my thing is... is <laughs> this is pretty much it. Like I'm, I'm like that. Like I'll be like, oh, I'll tell you some ghost stories. I'll tell you some stuff I've, you know, think I've seen and like crazy stuff with my family. But if you tell me a story, I will roll my eyes. <laughs> like I will be there, like, yeah, okay. Um, but yeah, they like do influence uh, from a lot of different stuff. Uh, but yeah, I used to watch Ghost Hunters, those kind of those kinds of shows. And it did cross my mind when I was working on it. Tell us a ghost story. No. <laughs> Buy the book. Buy the book. There's a bunch of ghost stories in there. <laughs> if you want, I'll tell you some stuff after the panel. I'm doing a signing right after this. If you want, I will totally tell you stuff. After yeah, actually, Josh and Goran will be at the Skybound booth, 14. I'm gonna hold you to that. I will. I'll tell you some crime stories too, because I've, you know, I got some crime stories. I know he's not. And we have ghosted covers. At the I'm gonna get over. He's he's gonna call security. Get this guy out of here. <laughs> no, 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 I'll tell you some stuff, man. Don't worry about it. We'll figure it out. I might call security though. <laughs> he was like a stand-up guy. And you should be worried, because Skybound has a huge goon squad. Like, just giant walls of muscle, so... Next to you all time. That might be Sean Kirkham. There's a couple more hands. Yeah, right there. I don't want to be contentious for creating that block. Whoa, all right then, sit down. <laughs> sit down, Ash. What are you doing? I mean, you, you've worked with some phenomenal artists in just about all of them. But, yes. but which, what? For uh, one book. And then was that just an issue of you have to do it because you're a with image or who's a bad? I don't know what you're talking about. Which 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 artist do you hate, brave man? Huh? He who has trouble with me. He who has trouble with, are you, are you, are you, are you talking about Rob Liefeld? Yeah. Come on, guys. <laughs> Seriously. One, the feet thing makes no sense because Rob draws fine feet. I can point to like, I don't know, a hundred artists that draw worse feet than Rob. I've never really understood that. Uh, the guy invented a graphic style where everybody like is on a mound because it looks cool. And then people are like, oh, there's no feet in this drawing. Yeah, there's 20 feet. Uh, I feel, I don't know, I, I, it, it makes me angry that the guy became such a punching bag in the industry because he is like a genuinely nice guy and he cares more about comics than almost anyone here. Uh, and I'm not going to get argumentative or anything, but uh, the, guy's, the guy's a great artist and you can go, uh, you can go fuck yourself, but no. Uh, <laughs> Like, like comics aren't about drawing something accurately and Rob is not going to sit here and tell you like yeah that's what a gun looks like he's not trying to draw a real gun he's not trying to draw a real sword he's doing a, a, a graphic shorthand something that is supposed to look interesting instead of looking accurate and it's the same thing that Jack Kirby did and it's the same thing that all of the greats that like establish a new visual language in comics do and I think that Rob and in, in history is going to stand uh, you know shoulder to shoulder with Jack Kirby as somebody who changed comics and had a voice and added to the overall medium. There are things that Rob has done, like Deadpool and Cable, that are still to this day uh, viable and, and propping up a, a, a dying company that is limping along at this point called Marvel Comics. Uh, and, uh, and, and, and it's because of, it's because 
because of that guy. I'm kidding. Oh. But uh, I'm not. But I am. But I'm not. Um, but no, I mean, he, he, yeah. I, 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 I did that book because uh, I like his art and I think he's really talented. Thanks for your question, though. This was a lot of fun. <laughs> I think I might have made it on Bleeding Cool. <laughs> Anyone else? I don't know why I'm giving you the mic. Get this, get this away from me. <laughs> cool. Over there. Uh, yeah, the question is for Robert. Uh, sorry. Um, <laughs> are, are there any other artists that I've worked with that you don't like? I can do a I can do a tight twenty minutes on Charlie Adler too. I'm making them all. So oh well, all right. Yeah. Um, I do too, a little bit. But <laughs> my question. Um, that Paul has a say to guy. Oof. My question okay. is um, about how you have so many projects going on, and I'm just honestly curious how the hell you do it all. I mean, seriously, how do you wake up at like, you know, I don't know, one in the morning and not go to bed until midnight? I, I don't. Ah, you know, I mean, I, I, for the, I have kids, so for the most part, I actually do work like a nine to five, like day job, and I don't really like work on the weekends very often. I do sometimes, like you know, uh, sneak down to my basement and get a little writing done, uh, like on a Saturday morning or something. Uh, uh, there have been, don't tell my wife, but my wife has been like, you've barely been working hard. You, uh, you sleep in today, and I'll be like, all right, I'll hire you. Sleep in tomorrow, and I'm like, okay, I'll sleep in tomorrow. And I take my laptop up to the bedroom, and then like she thinks I'm sleeping, but I like wake up and I like work for like two hours. Uh, uh, she shouldn't know that I do that though. But uh, so I, I plug things in here and there and, it, it, and I enjoy what I do so it doesn't really like uh, uh, bug me that like you know sometimes I do wake up early and get some stuff done and every now and then you know my kids will go to bed my wife and I will, like hang out watch a show something like Boardwalk Empire. I don't know, it's a good show. I'm gonna plug it again. Uh, and then, uh, and then you know, she'll go off to bed and then I'll, you know, write a few pages or something to make sure that, you know, Paul, as I say, has something to work on the next day because I am always behind. Uh, but, uh, but no, I mean, I don't know. It, it, it all seems to work out, but uh, I'm always writing something, so. What about, yeah, but I mean, so you have the writing, but then you also have the show. I can do a chart. Yeah. <laughs> well, you have the shows and the Comic-Cons. I mean, you know, it's more than just a write. Like, how do you see your family when you're I mean, I don't know, I'm just curious. I, listen, I, I, it's a very depressing life. I never have time to do anything. Uh, uh, I, I sometimes buy Blu-rays and I don't open them, and I'm just like, I just look at them longingly. Like, oh, Star Trek Into Darkness, we'll have our time. I know we will. I hear you have an excellent audio commentary that I will one day enjoy. Not today, though. Um, you're making me depressed. <laughs> Can I rant about Rob Liefeld again? <laughs> Tell the truth, that's three of you, and Cologne's really about you. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. I do sometimes daydream, like, could I, like, get a time machine and go back and, like, get another version of myself and be like, okay, slave, you work for me now, and, like, you, you do things here and all other things. And... Cologne! Next month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The past you Sorry. would kill you. Did you want to talk now? No. <laughs> oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah, but, but. Go ahead. Any questions that are going to make me upset or depressed? <laughs> How are your high school years? Well. Uh, yeah, so I, I, I read some papers that you had a final like, prolonged campaign in the Walking uh, Dead series that you do get a chance to do in comics. But I noticed a lot of like the characters just kind of getting really cut kind of short. And I was wondering, like, why is that? Like, like what is like, the focus of doing <clears throat> Uh, well, I mean, uh, you know, television is a collaborative medium, so there's a lot of people in the room coming up with different storylines. So, uh, you know, some people have, I think, really cool ideas that, you know, maybe seem to cut a character's storyline short in relation to the comic, but uh, it actually, like, enriches the... Enriches? Is that a word? I don't know. It, 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 it like helps the overall tapestry of the show like come together. So there are things like, uh, uh, has everybody seen season three of The Walking Dead and they're all caught up? Is, is, everybody, like, is everybody caught up on the comic? No, is everybody caught up on the show? Yeah! Uh, I'm fine with that. But uh, like the death of Andrea at the end of season three, like it seems like there's a lot of a lot of story that's like left on the table with her, but there is a lot of like cool stuff that comes from her death that is that is new and exciting to me, and hopefully will be new and exciting to you. So it all seems to work out, and like there's a lot of stories involving Andrea that you know her death like doesn't really mean that they're not going to happen in the comic. It just means that they might happen in 
in a different way. So uh, I like those changes and I like keeping you guys guessing. I feel like The Walking Dead is at its best when you don't know what's going to happen and you're you're caught off guard by you know these crazy events and that you don't see coming. And I feel like if, if comic fans were watching the show and were like, oh, I can set my watch by when Carl's going to get shot for the third time, uh, you know, it, it wouldn't have the same punch. So, uh, you know, I, I, I try to change things up as much as possible. Do you have any examples of things that have happened uh, after a character has died that hasn't been the same? Well, you're putting me on the spot. Um, I think there, uh, uh, I don't know, man, something. <laughs> <laughs> I think that uh, I think that um, uh, Dale in this in the second season. So his character was becoming the voice of reason, and his character was becoming like a, a, an emotional center for the group. And I feel like getting rid of him when we did sort of like sent things off into chaos and heightened the story with Shane. And then if you think about season three, got it ready for all the hell that was there. Yeah, like Rick wouldn't have been able to go off the deep end the same way that he did if Dale had been there to talk some sense into him. And so the way that like losing that character affected, I mean, there's interesting stuff with Glenn that came out of that. There's interesting stuff with, you know, almost everybody. Uh, you know, because of that death, and so I think that's a good example of you know uh, an early character death that you know did heighten the story a little bit. Plus, I was sick of that hat. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned earlier taking an exorcism story and kind of expanding it, telling a new story. How exactly do you do that? There's been so many exorcism stories. Well, you'll have to find out. Uh, no, I mean, uh, you know. Well, it's uh, uh, you know it's 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 gonna be a, a, a unique thing. I mean, there's there's gonna be definitely more than one person possessed. This isn't going to be a story about uh, you know one guy like performing an exorcism on a person for like a hundred issues. That would be terrible. I don't. What do you think of me? You expect the terrible version of that? Uh, but no, it's uh, listen. The book's about a guy named Kyle Barnes, and uh, Kyle Barnes has been plagued his entire life since childhood with demonic possession. And I'll go into more of that when the book's actually out. I don't want to spoil things too much, but uh, he basically uh, is kind of surrounded by this phenomenon, and he decides that he's going to learn more about it and and try and like figure it all out. And in doing so, he basically stumbles across uh, you know something that you know kind of threatens the entire world. So uh, yeah, thanks. All right, but uh, it's it's very it's actually a very epic story and uh, it's going to be really cool and kind of takes uh, takes what you see in a traditional exorcism story and kind of expands on it and you know goes in some new directions with it. How does the book become a skybound book? Like, do you just pitch it to image and you guys write through and you guys? Pitch it well, uh, Sean Makowitz is uh, right there. And uh, he is uh, oftentimes, uh, you know, scouring these conventions for, uh, you know, new books or <clears throat> searching online for, you know, interesting creators and things like that. Uh, sometimes it's, uh, you know, people I know or books that I've seen. Um, you know, Skybound isn't really, Skybound's really looking for self-starters, so we're not really looking for, like, a writer or a artist who is, like, pitching new stuff. You know, we like guys that are, you know, already, like, producing series and are, are generating books and, like, finding artists and, and putting things together or artists that are actually, like, doing work. So, um, you know, we're looking for people that, you know, um, you know, are doing cool stuff and, uh, you know, possibly do cool stuff with us. <clears throat> Sorry. I know in Thieves and in Clone, Russ is doing the lettering. Is he doing the lettering for all your other new books? <laughs> yeah. But what's Russ doing? Russ is lettering uh, Russ letters Ghosted. He wrote letters in The <coughs> Walking Dead, Super Dinosaur, Clone. Outcast is undecided. He letters no. of Thieves. <laughs> Off the email and back. Uh, but actually, on uh, Dead Body Road, we have uh, uh, Pat Rousseau is lettering that in Manifest Destiny. I work with Pat at, at DC Comics, and he's really sort of, he, once he, he left the lettering bullpen there, he's, he's lettered uh, Hellboy. I mean, he's, he's terrific. So. Hey, go ahead, you. That's good. Uh, you, then you. Sorry, I actually have a question for Andy. I was curious. Uh, you joined Thief after kind of the first two arcs were set. Did you find that very helpful that here was this whole slate of characters that had kind of been defined and now you had this platform to work with or did you feel in some instances it was a little restricted because so many of the central characters and early themes had already been laid out that now you had to, you know, expand from? No, I, I felt it, uh, it really helped um, having uh, the, the 
the, the previous writers, um, James Asmus and Nick Spencer, and obviously Robert, had built such a strong, solid foundation and had kind of created characters, each who, they each had their own like real strong individual voice. So when I came in, I kind of felt like, you know, I get this, I know exactly who these people are, I know how they talk, I know how they're going to act in any given situation. So it was just like a really great kind of springboard to kind of jump off and, and do my own thing with. So no, it was, it was good. I think when, sometimes if I'm working on like, you know, really well-known pre-established characters, like, you know, like Big Two or something like this, um, there's been so many different versions of those characters over the decades. Uh, and the fans always have their own personal favourites or weight of expectation that they bring to it. Uh, and I, I not, I've, I've not really been really immersed in that superhero world, so I might feel like I don't really know how to do this. So I don't know whether I should be trying to bring in my own voice to it or whether I should do like this version or that version or whatever. And you can't please all the people all the time. So I think, I think ultimately you've got to just, you know, you, you find, you know, do the version that you want to read yourself. You know, fortunately with uh, with Thief of Thieves, that is the version I want to read myself. So I kind of that's that's why I'm really happy to be sticking around with it. Cool. Uh, that's actually all the time we have for this panel. Uh, thank you very much for coming, uh, all the panelists, all the fans. Thank you, guys. <laughs>